Hey, what's going on everybody? This is John Hammond, and we're still looking at the Natus War Game from Over the Wire. So we're on level 11 right now. Um, that's just natus11.natus.labs.overthewire.org in the URL. And we looks like we have an application here, kind of a web application, that will let us set the color of um, the backgrounds for this web page. Um, and that is pretty neat, but we want to see what's vulnerable, what can we do with it. Um, so the notice here is that cookies are protected with XOR encryption. So we can uh, view the source code here, and this tells us, okay, here's the HTML of the page, and we can see some PHP code here. Um, this is the interesting stuff, the PHP code is a server-side code, so that's what we want to know and see what we can, uh, uh, what we can mess with, what we can get around. So. Uh, looks like we have a variable called default data. Uh, you can tell it's a variable because it has a dollar sign. Those are preceded, variables are preceded with a dollar sign in PHP. And it's an array, uh, associative array of show password is set to the string no. Background color is by default set to hex FFFFF or RGB 255255255. Uh, and we have functions, XOR encrypt and uh, load data, save data, etc. And then we actually have the level of the page, the, the HTML of, of the page and level. Um, it looks like there's a note here, it does a little condition. If the data array uh, index set show password is set to yes, then it will give us the password for Natus 12, the, the next level. So it's censored out here, but looks like that's the functionality that we want. We need to somehow set data show password to yes. Um, and checking out the code, we can see that data, that variable is set from the function load data, and it uses by default the default data. So we saw the default data up here, but what does load data do? This is the function. Looks like it reads out of the cookie um, PHP like special variable. It sets up um, the argument that's passed in. So default data originally is def and goes through, and that's my data. And it tests if the array key exists. So if the cookie has data, set, then it will, looks like it stores a variable temp data where it tries to base64 decode and then XOR encrypt and then JSON decode, whatever that data cookie is set to. Um, and that's a lot of stuff. But looks like that, all it really does is extract out the um, th those those variables. It looks like it extracts out show password, which we know by default is no, and the background color, which is hex FFF FF in this case. Um, it looks like it does that just by reading through it and it does some preg match. Okay, that, that regular expression is just to test whether the background color is set to a proper hexadecimal color. Cool. Um, and it will do these things if the key exists in that array. So there must be a cookie that's being set. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, I'm going to switch over to Sublime Text, where I have a Python script that's letting us work with this. Here is the page once we get it with the request module in Python, and we have the content, etc. Let's take a look at the source code, just like this again. Just run that and take a look. Make sure we actually run it. Is it not doing that for me? Classic. Okay, now I've got it set up, and it looks pretty gross. So we can go ahead and do our tidy HTML, and we can go ahead and deentitize that. And all those BR or breaks in HTML, we can remove those because they're just in the way. So, okay, now we can see the PHP code in a little bit of a better editor. And this is handy, but let's just kind of take note of this as source.php, source11.php, or whatever. Um, you may have seen that in my file explorer I had some stuff already pre-prepared, but that's because I've tried to test this stuff and wanted to have it done before I started to record. So, let's keep moving here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what that cookie actually looks like. So... We're doing that with the session variable. We're making this get request with the session variable. So we can print out session.cookies. Check this out. And we don't have anything. Oh, because we're still viewing the index source page. Let's go back to the original page. Now we can check out the cookie jar. And we have data. So let's scrape him out. Do some array indexing here. 
And it looks like this, which is clearly in base 64 um, with the percent %3D, and we know that that is um, a URL encoded character. We can just remove that. Um, we can decode that with URL lib. Um, URL lib dot quote, I think. I should bring it back. Nope. Unquote is the one that we want, because that will remove... Okay, that, there. Cool. Now it'll properly interpret that. So now let's grab base64 so we can decode that. Base64.decode. Uh, and we want B64 decode, my bad. So run that. And we have nonsense and garbage. So this must be the um, XOR version of this, version of the data that we're working with. Because remember, in the source code that we were looking at, they do run XOR encrypt on it. So it's probably going to be a little bit difficult to really read um, because it's XORed or exclusive or encrypted, stuff like that. Not really encrypted, but, you know, well, I guess maybe. Whatever. However you want to interpret it, it is XORed. That operation is ran through the data. So we can take a look at that XOR encrypt function here. And it happens with a key variable that we don't know. It's censored. Uh, the input that we pass to it, so it looks like that's just... Um, what was base64 decoded here, and the out text or the very the output variable that the result that happens when we go through this operation. So it does this XOR in a for loop. It iterates through each character by using i as our iterator, um, all the way through the length of the text. So we can index the text and the key based off of the length of the key. Uh, modulus, so it wraps around, it does a circle operation thing, and it uses the XOR operator here, that, that caret symbol. So we're appending to our output.txt, or output text, that variable out text, um, with the PHP concatenation character with the dot, the dot equals. And then it finally gives us the out text. So, okay, let's try and get in the middle of this, because we can totally recreate this function. Um, let's, in fact, do that. Um, I want to see if this will copy correctly because I see some weird characters in this uh, text. Uh, it looks like there's no real space or tab character in some of the indentation for this code. So let's go ahead and it, it may have done some weird things with tidy HTML. I'm going to copy this code from the website, from the web page. So I want XOR encrypt and I want the default data. And now let's create a PHP script where we can handle this stuff. Um, second natus 11.php that already exists, so let's go ahead and replace it because I was testing it earlier. So let's have PHP tags in here and let's put where is our. Oh, I did not uh, totally just killed our, our editor, whatever. Whoops. Okay. Where is PHP 7.0? USB bin 7.0. Let's use that as the interpreter here. Use our shebang line. Okay, and now we have proper things. So if we were to try and run uh, JSON decode, that stuff, JSON decode is going to happen when we have the encrypted data, but obviously it's going to just be plain text of this. They, they loaded this to begin with, with save data. So that must have happened with JSON encode here. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. JSON encode, our default data. And let's echo that out to the screen so we can see it. And second natus 11.php, we will run it. And, okay, it looks like just a string. That's all it did. It, or it interprets it however we need to. Cool. So if we wanted to use that, and that's what's passed into our encrypt, well, perfect. Um, let's try and see if we can figure out the key for the data that we already have. Because we know what the original is, that's this encoded version, and we know what the actual XOR result was, we can kind of figure out what the 
key might be because XOR works with, with specific properties. Um, we have A XOR with B, and that equals C, right? So in that case, plain text XOR with the key equals ciphertext. But we can reverse this operation because we can switch these things around. If we try and XOR the plain text with the ciphertext, we will return the key. So let's try and do that. Um, let's create another function where we can pass in a key. In, and then key. Let's just modify that. Actually, we don't need to create a whole new one. Now that that's passed in, um, and somehow let's, okay, let's say, call this original data that we're working with, and let's go ahead and get the uh, the XOR data um, is a way we can pass it to this PHP code. So since we're working with it over here as random garbage characters, let's actually go ahead and hexify that or encode into hex. So that is now the raw version just in hex and that way we can give it easily to the PHP code by passing that in and decoding it. So let's actually because you saw in the source code they were using functions called bin to hex or hex to bin. That may actually may have been in another in the previous level, but that will, you know, get the raw bytes out of some hex. So if I echo uh, hex to bin and pass in that hex, we should be able to see that. Yeah, okay, cool. So there's the raw stuff. So let's say this is the ciphertext. And this is the plain text. So now we can figure out the key by running our XOR encrypt by passing in the plain text and what we're going to use as the ciphertext for our key here. Because we're just doing that operation. A XOR B equals C. So A XOR C equals B. Now let's try and run that echo XOR encrypt with the plain text and the ciphertext. Check this out, and we get something that repeats. We get this QW8J over and over and over again. So that must be the original key, just those four. So now we can use that as our key. We can say key equals this string. And so now we can have the data that we want to work with, the data that we actually want, the good data where show password is equal to is set to yes and now we can run the like operation to get the cookie value for that we let's see that was um first we have to xor it we need to run json encode on our good data so now good plain text and we have the key, so good ciphertext can equal to XOR encrypt, pass in the good plain text now that we have, and the key that we want to give it. Cool. So now let's just echo that out and see what our good ciphertext is. It's good, probably going to look like nonsense, yep, because it's XOR. So what did they do in their script to handle it? They... Base64 encoded it. Okay, so let's do that. We have that function in PHP as well. So cookie can equal base64 encode of the good ciphertext. And now let's set, check out what the cookie is. This, whatever this is. So let's copy and paste this into our Python script. Let's set um, cookies data set to this. And so now we will 
get this page, just as we had before, but we'll pass in cookies equals cookies. Now we can print all this. Let's move those up here just so it looks normal. Let's run this and see what we've got on the page now that we've given it the proper cookie. We got it! Set the syntax to HTML. And you can see here, it ran with the password for Natus12 is this guy. Cool, so that worked. Um, all we did was do a little trick with XOR, was figuring out um, what the key was by XORing both the plain text and the ciphertext, because we had those originally, and that property of XOR will allow us to determine the key. Perfect. So now, now that we have the password to Natus12, let's go ahead and create a new script. And get us back to where we were at a fresh script. That is 12. And when we run this, now you can see we are on Natus level 12. Okay, awesome. Sweet. That was it. That was our cool and good way to get through Natus level 11. Just trying to take advantage of their PHP code, uh, modifying the XOR function so it can take a key in that we can pass to it, and then using the plaintext and the ciphertext to our advantage. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you're enjoying this and these videos. Uh, if you are, hey, please like the video. Maybe leave a comment on what you think. If you're willing to subscribe, and thank you again. I'll see you in the next video.